So as a final topic about compactness, I want to say something about Lebesgue numbers. Um, okay, so uh, most of the stuff we've done with compactness has been uh, related to general topological spaces, but now we're going to go back to uh, the context of metric spaces. Okay, so uh, so let X be a metric space, and uh, it's going to suppose you've got some open color. <laughs> so in this context, uh, a Lebesgue number. So this is a number uh, epsilon, say, greater than naught. Uh, <coughs> uh, such that for every point uh, x of our space, um, uh, there's an index i. That, uh, um, so that not just the point x itself, but the whole open ball around x, a radius epsilon, uh, is contained uh, within uh, the uh, corresponding set u r. Okay, uh, <coughs> so that's what we mean by a Lebesgue number. Now, of course, it's uh, not at all obvious uh, that a Lebesgue number exists. Uh, in fact, uh, well, if, if x is not compact, it's not very hard to uh, produce examples where there is no Lebesgue number. Um, but uh, and, and and this is a sense of what this is about, right? It, you know, this is kind of about uh, uh, about the minimum size minimum size of overlaps between uh, sets in the in the cover. You know, if uh, <coughs> it could be that the sets U I are very big, but they only just overlap just a tiny amount uh, in order to cover the whole space. And uh, if that's the case, then you know, your big number will be very small. Uh, but uh, you know, if, uh, if, if if the sets UI are only moderately big, but they overlap each other a great deal, uh, then your, your Lebesgue number will be a bit larger. Okay. Um, if there is a Lebesgue number, which, uh, well, and then here's the, the theorem, uh, uh, is that if uh, X is compact, uh, so it's a compact metric space, uh, then, uh, Every open cover uh, has a Lebesgue number. <clears throat> uh, okay, so uh, uh, so the proof Okay, so we have an open cover like this, uh, and then we need to need to construct a Lebesgue number for it. So, uh, um, <clears throat> uh, so for each point x and x, uh, well, we're going to choose some index, say i x, with x lying in that set. Okay, <clears throat> uh, now. Uh, now you are, uh, this uh, U set is open, uh, and we're using the metric topology, of course. So, uh, 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 so as U I X is open, uh, uh, so we can choose some uh, uh, radius R X greater than zero with the corresponding open ball around x of radius rx contained within u i x. Now we have to do something a little bit cunning here. Uh, instead of using these open balls, we use the open balls of half the radius. So we uh, uh, put uh, vx is the open ball around x of radius rx over 2. Uh, 
Uh, so that's open and it uh, contains x. Okay, so these uh, sets vx are going to give us an open cover which has a finite subcover. Uh, we'll say in a second how to use that. Yeah, so uh, these uh, sets vx give an open cover uh, of, uh, of the compact space x. Uh, so we can choose a finite subcover, in other words, choose uh, some list, finite list, uh, so that the uh, uh, union of the corresponding uh, corresponding V sets is, is the whole space X. Right. <coughs> um, okay, and uh, Remember, each of these x's, they've got an associated rx, as we had down here. Uh, so we're going to put uh, epsilon as yeah, take the minimum of the corresponding radii that we had down here, rx1, rxn, over 2. <coughs> um, so yeah, so we want to claim that that's a Lebesgue number. Okay, so we uh, um, we're going to take some uh, uh, some x and x, and we need to show that the uh, the open ball, the radius epsilon around x, is contained in one of the uh, one of the sets of the original cover. Okay, <coughs> um, so. Uh, Uh, so we can, uh, oh, let's say call T, uh, we're going to choose T with a uh, little x lying in Vxt. Okay, so uh, and we know that the uh, un this finite union here is the whole uh, whole space x, and so we've got our little x here, it must lie in one of these sets. Okay, so we can choose some T with an x lying in Vxt, and let's just remember what the, uh, what the definition of that was. Uh, that was uh, the open ball uh, around xt of radius uh, rxt over 2. <coughs> um, okay. <coughs> okay, so that means uh, um, okay. now we're supposed to show that, uh, that the open ball of radius epsilon around, uh, uh, around x is contained within some one of these sets here. Okay. Um, so we are, it will be enough to show that uh, the open ball around x of radius epsilon uh, is contained within the set uh, u i x t. Um, uh, indeed, if we've got some point y, uh, y lying in this open ball, Uh, then we know that the distance uh, from x to y uh, is going to be less than epsilon, and epsilon uh, was the minimum of these uh, various uh, things here, so this is going to be less than or equal to rxt over 2, okay, because it's the minimum of all the rx over 2s. Okay. Um, <clears throat> and uh, also we know that the distance uh, from, uh, <coughs> uh, from x to xt uh, that's uh, because of x is in the uh, in this vxt, which is just this open ball here. So that uh, tells us that this distance here is less than rxt over two. Uh, so uh, combining these two things with a triangle inequality, that tells us that the uh, distance uh, from y to xt is less than uh, rxt over two plus rxt over 2, which is rxt. Uh, so y is in the open ball around xt of radius rt. Uh, but, uh, <coughs> um, <coughs> but by construction, you know, the, uh, this is how we, how we chose these, uh, these r's and things. So the, uh, this open ball here uh, is contained within uh, uixt 
that was uh, how these uh, R's were con uh, R's were chosen. Uh, so this should be R X T. Um, <clears throat> okay, so we've shown that. Uh, uh, if y lies in OBX epsilon, then the y also lies in UIXT, and, that, and that's precisely what we mean by saying we've got this inclusion of sets here. Um, okay, so we've uh, uh, yeah, so we've shown that this open ball is contained within uh, one uh, uh, one of the sets or, of the original cover, and that works for any x uh, with this particular epsilon. This epsilon is fixed; it doesn't depend on x. Uh, but uh, so for any x, this ball of this radius is contained in one of the sets of the open cover, and that's precisely what it means uh, to say that epsilon is a Lebesgue number. So that proves uh, that uh, every every open cover of a compact metric space has a Lebesgue number, as we said, and that will turn out to be uh, to be quite useful uh, later on when we're studying some uh, detailed properties of homology groups.